Although the dogma used to be an avoidance of epinephrine, adrenaline, in digital blocks, multiple studies involving thousands of patients support the premise that lidocaine with epinephrine can be safely injected into digits, as long as patients have no history of peripheral vascular compromise and the recommended volume is injected. However, as nail surgery is usually performed with a tourniquet, there is little need for the vasoconstrictive effect of epinephrine. Necrosis and the distal tip of the toe in a patient with extreme vasoaspastic conditions that received accidentally lidocaine with epinephrine. Pain during anesthesia injection comes from several factors. The needle prick, rapid injection, and acidity of the anesthetic. In order to reduce these side effects, use thin long needles, 30 gauge, greater than 1 inch. Inject very slowly, and buffer the lidocaine. Add 1 part 8.4% sodium bicarbonate to 10 parts lidocaine with slash out epinephrine. Methods to minimize pain of LA administration. The patient. Reassurance, distraction. Topical anesthesia prior to infiltration. The LA agent. Warming 237 to 42 C. Buffering to 8.4% sodium bicarbonate, 1 milliliter slash 9 milliliters LA the injection technique. Fine, 27 to 30 gauge, and long, 0.1 inch, needles. Slow injection. Use smallest volume of solution necessary. Infiltrate through wound edges. Inject from looser subdermal to tighter dermal. Block individual nerves. Anesthesia can be administered as a proximal digital block, formerly, ring block, or a distal digital block, wing block. For a ring block, 2 to 3 ml of 1% or 2% plain lidocaine is injected superficially into the base of the digit on each of its lateral sides. To prevent vasospasm and tamponade of the blood vessels, the volume of local anesthetic should be less than 1 to 1.5 ml on each side of the digit. The block is achieved within 15 to 20 minutes. This procedure may injure the neurovascular bundles at the base of the finger. In the distal digital block, the needle is inserted vertically. 1 cm lateral and proximal to the junction of the proximal and lateral folds. Here 0.5 ml of the anesthetic is injected in order to anesthetize the dorsal nerve branch. The needle is then advanced vertically towards the palmar surface, where an additional 0.5 ml is injected around the palmar nerve branch. The procedure is then repeated on the opposite side to obtain full anesthesia of the nail unit. The wing block has several advantages over the proximal digital block. One. The onset of action is quicker. 2. Less volume of anesthetic is required, and 3. The injection is more comfortable. The term ring block should be abandoned as it suggests injection of anesthetic all around the base of the finger. This historical technique induces constriction of the blood flow through a tourniquet of fluid at the proximal phalanx. It should not be performed anymore. The proximal digital block is the updated and adequate procedure of this old type of anesthesia. Blue nail syndrome, subungual hemorrhage, trauma to the nail causes the tiny blood vessels under the nail to bleed forming a blood blister under the nail causing considerable pain. If the subungual blood blister is small and relatively painless then it can be left alone to resolve by itself. It is incorporated into the nail and progressively migrates to the free edge of the nail plate. A larger subungual blood blister, involving up to 50% of the nail bed, needs to be drained of the blood with a nail drill to relieve the pressure. Removal of the complete nail, whether temporary or permanent, is not usually necessary. When greater than or equal to 50% involvement of the nail plate is associated with a fracture of the distal phalanx, examination of the nail bed is suggested. Two recent studies suggest otherwise, Rosaresi, Gelman H., J. Hansurge 1999, and Seberg D. C. et al., M. J. E. M. E. R. G. Med 1991, if nail plate still adherent and not avulsed, leave it in place. Fingernail avulsion and nail substitute if the avulsed nail is present, it must be replaced in the nail fold. Sometimes the fingernail may be too damaged to be repositioned. In these cases, a nail substitute, a piece of x-ray film or a piece of the suture envelope, 
should be used to protect the fingernail during the healing process and to avoid adherences along the proximal nail bed and nail fold. Wounds and lacerations of the nail bed and or matrix. A nail bed injury is an injury to the tissue that adheres the nail to the bone below. It is the most common hand injury and, since it is the longest, the middle finger is most often involved. In case of transversal wounds with discontinuity of the nail and nail bed, synthesis can be made with a 3 8 needle passing through the nail plate and bed. Nail Hobbinage If only the sterile matrix is damaged, the nail should be left attached proximally in the nail fold. When the nail germinal matrix is also involved, the entire nail should be detached. Nail bed examination should be performed under local anesthesia, and every nail bed injury should be repaired after nail removal. Any irregularities of the wound edges of the nail bed or matrix should be avoided. The nail bed or matrix should then be approximated. 7 to 0 absorbable suture. Avoid excessive tension. A hole in the nail plate should always be made before replacement in order to allow serum and blood drainage. The nail is finally inserted in the nail fold and kept adherent to the nail bed by a 3 to 0 external figure U or X suture. When the fingernail is lost, a nail substitute is applied. AX shaped suture, BU shaped suture, C nail bed suture, D nail substitute, E clinical result at 4 months, F clinical result at 12 months. If more exposure of the nail fold is required, incisions are made at the proximal edge from the aponychium, conaval incisions, because are easier to approximate and cause less scarring than an incision made straight proximal. The suture is removed after 2 to 3 weeks. The nail adheres to the nail bed within 1 to 3 months until pushed off by the new nail, which will reach complete growth at 4 to 6 months after trauma. In case of nail bed or matrix injury, all fragments are preserved and replaced as free grafts in order to attain an optimal final result. Nail bed avulsion, sterile and germinal matrix defect. As a general principle, when the nail bed is avulsed, it should be always repositioned to obtain anatomical reconstruction of the fingernail. Thus, when a fragment of the nail bed remains attached to the undersurface of the evulsed nail, it should be replaced as a composite free graft. If the evulsed fragment is not available because of loss or destruction, conservative treatment or reconstructive techniques can be considered. Conservative techniques are based on the observation that the nail bed has a regenerative potential that allows for complete nail repair in about six weeks. Ogunro reported that when the residual nail bed is effectively covered, in order to prevent drying and maintain a local environment suited for tissue regeneration, normal nail growth may be obtained. Nail bed evulsion. Horizontal mattress sutures. Pull beneath eponychium. Protection of repair. Native nail plate is ideal. Silicone, aluminum. Drill hole in nail, hematoma evacuation. Secure protective device with suture. Protect scarring dorsal slash volar nail fold. Reconstructive techniques can be used when larger nail bed defects are observed, but these procedures may be demanding and not immediately executable in all the orthopedic and plastic surgery centers. There are several options for reconstructing sterile and matrix defects, including split thickness or full thickness grafts, rotational flaps, and composite grafts. Nail injuries result from crushing trauma that causes compression of the nail to the subjacent bony surface. Various types of injuries can be described, including Subungual hematoma Simple injuries of the nail bed and matrix Lacerations and contusions More complex injuries associated with tissue loss with or without avulsion, and or associated fractures. Management of a fingernail injury should be selected on the basis of injury type and extent and requires accurate knowledge of nail anatomy and physiology. An effective emergency treatment is mandatory to prevent secondary deformities and reduce the risk of secondary reconstruction of the nail bed, which often gives unpredictable results. Although the standard of care for acute avulsion injuries of the nail bed is split thickness nail bed graft, some study demonstrates that the avulsed nail bed has its own inherent regenerative potential. Hence, 
the intervention with split thickness nail bed graft is not necessary as long as the nail bed is adequately protected. It seems that effective coverage of the nail bed prevents desiccation and protects the clot and its culture milieu conducive to spontaneous regeneration of the nail bed and nail. Most nail abnormalities are associated with underlying medical conditions and resolve as those conditions are treated. Infections of the nails, such as with fungus or bacteria, are a significant exception in that they may respond to specific treatment. Although both topical and oral medications are available, topical agents typically are not very effective because infections are usually under the nail, and topical medications cannot penetrate the nail plate. <laughs>